Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's video, I would like to show you my begonia collection, especially this skin begonia and some reviews and thoughts and my experience on cultivating them in my tropical garden. So sit by and enjoy the show. In today's video, I would like to talk about a situation where you would find a cane begonia suddenly dying away. I have experienced many times in a situation where it appears to be a little bit of a mystery to me where a healthy begonia, cane begonia, end up seems to be a little bit like uh, leggy and the leaves tend to drop off and don't look so healthy looking. Something similar like the earlier cane now we notice that some of it seems to be very uh, robust and healthy looking and eventually over time it appeared to be like becoming maturing and the whole leaf will just drop away in this context if you look over here uh, this appears to be very healthy looking and uh, seems to be very much uh, robust and strong so in a way this is there's nothing to be worried about and this is how cane begonia should look like where they appear to be very vibrant and strong like in most cases uh, like all these cane begonias if you notice uh, over here you see I've actually trimmed some of it and I've actually used for propagation and I will show you how I actually uh, propagate them so but anyway just for a viewing pleasure this is how they are supposed to be uh, vibrant, strong, a little bit more like a vegetable plant where it is strong and sturdy. Now I must say that and I will make a very strong emphasis to always keep spare begonia plants because these begonias especially actually all cane including cane begonia and rhizome begonias their lifespans are very short and sometimes you may not even know what happens to them and suddenly they may just rot away and just die and when that situation arises it's just too late to save anything now looking over here as I was mentioning uh, this appears to be a little bit like in a dying stage but it's not dead yet so I can save it if you look over here uh, if I were to leave it for chance and just uh, continue to cultivate it eventually all these leaves will drop away and the whole thing will rot away and it's dead so instead of leaving it for chances uh, what I've decided here is I've, I've actually trimmed it and I'm planning to propagate it and one of the higher chances of propagation here is to propagate them using water and I find that it's far more successful than cutting it and placing them straight into a media. Now looking at this if you were to see how I actually prepare it I actually take a, a plastic bottle and I cut into half and I actually place it like this and over a week or two uh, these will start to grow uh, water roots on them and with these roots they has a higher chances of survival rather than uh, leaving them be as it is or trimming and placing them straight into the soil medium. Uh, another thing here is that I am not actually using any rooting hormone or anything of those kind just uh, fresh water in this and occasionally uh, about three or four days time I will change the water and I will check on it just to make sure that everything is in good condition another factor about leaving uh, water in this kind of situation is that they can breed mosquitoes so you may have to keep an eye on that just to make sure there is no mosquito lava in it and if you do just make sure that you uh, responsibility responsibly get rid of them <laughs> before they turn into a breeding ground so this is how i actually prepare it if you notice that uh, i will always make sure that there is no leaves touching the water because I find that uh, when they do they tend to rot 
and the whole thing can be a waste. So make sure that uh, placing them in a condition where none of the water is touching the leaves but it is well hydrated where the stem is actually uh, into the water at least one or two nodes. So these are the things that you have to take note of. Uh, I am actually taking chances on this because uh, uh, if I, as I mentioned earlier, if I were to leave it as it is growing on the flower pot, chances are this is actually a goner. But doing this, there is a higher chance of this to survive and I've actually able to propagate and grow it. So the earlier part there when I actually trimmed off those stem that you have actually noticed, this is actually those stem cutting which I placed them. Uh, this is about two to three weeks in water and if you can actually notice it, there are some uh, root growth on this uh, stem. If you can see it clearly. Uh, also if you notice that uh, I, I hope you can see the, some viscous kind of roots that is actually appearing on the uh, nodes, especially these the leaf nodes. So uh, this is this this appears to be very healthy looking, and uh, and I'm actually planning to uh, propagate them in uh, soil medium, which I will show to you on how I actually do it later at the end of this video. Now some thoughts about this is that uh, I'm actually, I actually kept this indoors uh, away from direct hot sun but how, however it is actually underneath a bright fluorescent light and this seems to do fine okay, as I mentioned earlier occasionally I'll check on them about three or four days uh, once and to make sure there is no leaf uh, no leaf drop into it or anything or rot into it okay the other thing that I want to mention to you that if you do find one stem appears to be rotting do remove it immediately because if you don't the whole thing can rot away so that could be a, a major waste on that this is a different type of begonia uh, also a stem cutting which i placed it in water and you can see clearly the roots have established itself very much matured and many roots have actually uh, developed in this condition and I find that doing this seems to be far more effective in keeping the cane begonia species in your garden in a, in a way that uh, this style of propagations seems to work best in my garden condition. The other factor that I would like to share here is that do keep the container where the water is just a quarter, you don't have to really fill it up. And I find that lesser the water, the higher the chances of uh, success rate. In a way, I find that uh, these cuttings do give out some pheromone or hormones to it for it to grow. Okay, this particular one, I've actually cut them too late and it was about to die. And as you can see, it is already dead and rotten away. So what i'm sharing here is that it's not all together everything uh, a success rate there will be a chance and this is one of the things that i've taken a chance to save it and it didn't work okay this particular cane begonia is actually from a maculata vitii species and i find that some are a little bit more sensitive and difficult and some are very hardy and so this particular one i find that the elbow pictar type seems to be very hardy and able to handle my garden condition where it is uh, almost wet and humid and uh, sometimes it's very hot so very unpredictable unpredictable uh, weather condition now these are the materials that I use for my propagation. I think these are the basic things that you actually need. Uh, a plastic pot or you can use any pots that you have. Uh, I use this. This is uh, a cotton fiber which I use as a drainage uh, piece for the uh, propagation because I find that uh, anything else seems to be block, block the drainage hole and make cause root rot problem so in a way do find something you can also use netting or uh, 
uh, even pebbles. Okay, the next thing that I actually use, this is actually coconut chips, uh, which actually I cut them on my own. I collected around my garden area in my region and uh, I find that this is far more economical and practical for me. You can actually buy them online, but however, I find that it's very expensive. So do check around in the neighborhood or any of your friends who do have a coconut tree and if they were to or open up their coconut shells and I think this is one of the best mediums that I find that work best in my garden. So apart from coconut chips, I also use sand. Uh, this is a little bit of a coarse sand. You can see a little bit of pebble-like kind of a situation here. Uh, also again, uh, it's a little bit difficult to get this online or what, but if you can get your hands on it, uh, do find them. Uh, I get my sand uh, around the abandoned uh, construction areas where the leftover sand and I use that. Okay, this is a container where I keep my compost and I find that uh, this is one of the most, imp also one of the important medium that I use for my uh, propagation. So again, compost is, is nothing of an expensive type, something that you can actually buy it very cheaply from any of the garden centers. So these are the three main ingredients that I use for my propagation. Now coming to how I do it, uh, what I do is after putting the, the cotton fiber, I just place a little bit of these uh, coconut chips in it and I find that coconut chips actually aids stronger root growth so in a way that uh, this is how I do it's very much like layering a little bit of coconut chips followed by the sand and then uh, I use a lot of compost as you can see here uh, it's sort of like one layer of it uh, you, not to put too much of it but just uh, adequately then another set of uh, coconut chips followed by sand and uh, just to see that it the whole thing sits on it and uh, these are the cuttings that I actually used so you can see clearly here uh, I hope the camera is uh, able to zoom in this uh, uh, microscopic uh, root ball here so this is actually adequate and good enough for the plant to to survive uh, and, and this is very important because the lack of which uh, chances are this can rot away now i also noticed that this one particular one did not root and uh, i think uh, the whole thing uh, and there's a slight rot taking place here so i had to put back into the water i may have to trim this off and restart again and see how it this fast later but i see that this plant is a little bit uh how do you say healthy so nothing to worry about i'll deal with that later so so i think this tree uh, cuttings is good to go in this flower pot so you can actually plant one uh plant in a one small pot but i find that uh, this is good enough to hold three so i'm just showing how I'm doing it here now the other hand is actually holding uh, <laughs> my camera so a little bit difficult so I'm just showing to you how I'm going to do it shortly so I've rearranged it here you can see it here that uh, I just lightly has placed the coconut chips so uh, just to hold it and uh, I, I will be topping up with more of this uh, planting material here the medium here to uh, how do you say uh, to hold them okay the other thing here is this uh, you can bunch them all together and plant it but I find that doing so they may uh, become how do you say it, uh, fight with each other for nutrients so placing them apart seems to work best or if you have the space and the and the means to do so plant one cutting each in a separate tiny pot okay the other thing here is this do not over pot these begonias and i find that uh, a lot of uh, gardeners make a mistake of repotting them to a bigger pot and only find that the begonia seems to die away so uh, if any means uh, always uh, under pot them don't over pot them i think this particular set 
can actually last for a year plus if I'm not wrong and so this is how I actually do it you can notice that uh, they are not compressed and pressed hard but just nicely done so uh, there's enough room for the roots to grow and uh, Okay, the other thing that I want to mention to you here is that I also use chopsticks to to straighten the plant so that it doesn't uh, bend or fall or lose its balance. Eventually, these canes will actually grow taller and you can actually replace these uh, bamboo sticks, chopsticks with a, a stronger, more sturdier sticks for them to take support. Other than that, the basic care is very much simple, bright indirect light, uh, also watering them with cautions because too much, if they are too wet, the whole thing can rot away. So just lightly watering them when the medium is slightly dry. Uh, other than that, occasionally, I would say about once a week, uh, foliar fertilizer on them so that they have enough nutrients. And uh, other than that, I find that uh, they are actually hardy plants. Uh, another factor that I notice is that they do not have so much of a pest problem unless uh, if they are not placed in an adequate location. Sometimes I find that uh, if they are placed in a too dark uh, in a place, uh, too shaded in an environment, this tend to attract pests on them, especially mealybug or scale insect. So bright indirect light, uh, also, I would rather see at least one to two hours or three hours of uh, sunlight on them seems to do good in a longer run. I have now come to the end of my video. If you have any questions, do put them in a the comment below and I'll try my best ability as possible to answer your queries. If you can, do check out on my other videos, on other tutorials which I have explained and how I care for my garden plants, which can be very beneficial, beneficial for you if you are new into cane begonias and cultivating them in your garden space. So thank you so much for visiting and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.